Felicitations. Welcome to the captain's, not the captain's cabin. That's afterwards. Welcome to, I was just looking at it. Welcome to uh, the Intrepid Radio program. This is just the pre-show. So uh, stand by as we get everything ready to go. That's why we have that three-minute buffer. Just to make sure uh, everything's all set. I had to put my... Uh, my elevator cushion on. My chair doesn't come up quite high enough to meet my desk, which is a little tall. So uh, when I have the camera set right, like that, I look like I'm a little bit low. So uh, let's see. We got our sound going. Looks like everything is set to the right level. And um, how are you all tonight? What's going on? I see a Kelly Bell out there. And also you, Kalina. And uh, my eyes are healing, but my eyes are also just a little bit wonky. So um, it changed my whole prescription, of course. Let's see. What have I got? I've got a minute and a half. Speaking of that, I got to go put a little drop in my eyes because they're dry. Hang on. I'll be right back. This is the pre-show, so I can do that. It's uh, actually three different prescription eye drops I have to put in my eyes for at least another week. Uh, it's going all right. So what do we got? We got to go live. Stand by. Here we go. Radio program with Scotty Roberts. Intelligent talk. Hey, folks, welcome to the program. I'm your host, Scotty Roberts. This is my show, The Intrepid Radio Program, running for uh, 24 years now. Since we launched this show, almost 24, by the end, by the fall of this year. And so I want to welcome you to the program. Thanks for being here. Uh, you would think after 24 years, I'd get tired of doing this. I don't. I love doing it. Uh, there are days, however, that I run out of topics. I'm like, or I haven't thought about it all day or all week. And I'm like, what am I going to talk about tonight? And uh, so, other than that, uh, it's coming up with material, and you'd think you'd never run out with all the things I like to talk about, with history, archaeology, strange elements of both of those, weird history, uh, the occult, uh, weird science, weird religion, religion itself, religious history, uh, talking about uh, supernatural things, cryptids, ghosts, spirits, Things that go bump in the night, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things are things I love to talk about. And uh, so I hope you still enjoy this show. Uh, those of you who, I don't know, has anybody been here the whole time I've been doing radio? <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, and uh, uh, if you've been here for, you know, longer than uh, just uh, an introductory uh, um, soiree, uh, sachet into the show, uh, you'll know uh, how long we've been going and all the kinds of stuff we talk about. Uh, still working up to getting guests back on this show. 
It's all a technical issue. And uh, once I have that mastered, I've got so many guests I'd like to bring into this show and uh, do some talking with some people. Now, the Captain's Cabin kind of accomplishes that for us because the first half of our show is on radio and we can't seem to broadcast with a guest. But, uh, or we can broadcast the guest. You just can't, I can't hear anybody on my end. And it's a glitch we have not figured out in all this time. And so I think it just requires me to get a second computer. <laughs> but we used to be able to do it before. It's just one day it stopped working. I think it was an update or something that did that. And so now I'm just babbling. But uh, um, this show, uh, hopefully we'll start doing uh, some guests again soon because I think that that's a lot of fun to bounce things off of people. Uh, Michelle asks, uh, when did you start radio? Uh, 2000 was my first official year doing radio, and it was with an old friend of mine, and uh, he had a show in Oklahoma City on Oklahoma City local radio, um, and uh, we did a talk show. We did paranormal, uh, uh, UFO, ghost stuff like that. and. Um, Less about ghosts and more about, we did a lot of UFO type of stuff, ufology. Uh, we did, um, uh, and talking to the people who were the big names in those fields, trying to talk about the, mis the mystery behind it all. And uh, we also did a lot of political talk. And uh, that's where I cut my teeth doing radio is with him back in 2000. So I would have been 40 years old, 39 technically, when we started doing radio. So uh, let's see. Michelle said, uh, I started listening to you in 2016 or 17. That's pretty cool. That's seven, eight years ago. So uh, I'm glad you're still here after all that time, Michelle. And uh, Barbie D, good to see you. Michelle Canham Free, lovely to always see you. And uh, Randall Flagg is here. Steph Cuervo Queen. Guys, I got to put on my glasses, even though they're not the right ones anymore. My eyes are a little wonkier right now until everything's healed up and I have to get a new pair of glasses because my old prescription no longer works. So, um, it, it, you know, it's funny after that surgery, it seems they made my eyes more farsighted, is it? I'm, I'm blurry, fuzzy up close, fuzzier than I used to be. But distances I can see almost perfectly. So uh, just a slight, slight edge to it. So um, I got to get new glasses, but they went away till my eyes are all healed. And um, so uh, Steph is here and uh, Randall and Michelle and Kalina and Kelly Bell is here. And uh, who all else is here? Just checking it out early on in the in the show here. Good to see you all. Glad you're here. Um, make yourselves at home. Those of you who are here but are not showing up in the channel. Come on into the channel, the chat channel, and talk. Meet everybody and have a good time. It's Friday night. Maybe that's why people aren't here. It's Friday night here, and we had snow for the second time this winter, uh, just last night. And it was about three, four inches, and then uh, three-fourths of it is gone already uh, because it was above freezing today. But now they're expecting between Sunday and Tuesday some big front coming in here off the Rocky Mountains and uh, into the Plains states, the Dakotas, and coming down from uh, Canada and uh, hitting us. So they are predicting upwards of 16 inches of snow by between Sunday, Sunday night and Tuesday morning. So Monday is going to be a snowy day. Now watch, they predicted this stuff before. Watch, we won't get any. <laughs> which is fine with me. I mean, we could use the moisture. Yeah, we could use the precipitation. But it's been kind of nice having a warm winter with no snow, which is very rare up here in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Up north, they got more snow. But down here, we did not. So um, next year, we're going to get nailed with snow probably, and uh, we'll forget what it was like. Let me take a drink. Mm. Ah, wet my whistle. So as you can see by the graphic that I've got up here, if you're watching the show, I want to talk about talking to spirits. We talked about that 
in the after show, uh, the captain's cabin. By the way, if you are not familiar with the captain's cabin, if you're new here, you can, after the show ends on the radio station, uh, in about uh, oh, 45 minutes or so, then uh, we just morph right over. We stay broadcasting and we open up into the captain's cabin, which is our after show. And uh, we can take your calls then, and we can have guests in and so on. Hey, C. Payton, good to see you. Uh, I don't think I've ever met you before, but it's good to have you here. Field guy, good to have you here, as always, brother. Nice to see you. So tonight, I want to talk about that thing that we were talking about on Wednesday night after the show. We got uh, pretty deep into talking about spirit communication and uh, what it does, how to, not so much how to do it, but uh, what it's all about. So here, I'm going to take this graphic down, boom, like that, and uh, let's just put our banners up, which I should have done in the pre-show, but I didn't, so it doesn't matter. They're up now. How about that? la di da So uh, banners are up. Let's roll into this a little bit. Spirit communication. Now, the first thing I have to say about this is everything I ever learned about talking to spirits or ghosts, spirit communication, was all labeled and categorized as the stuff of the devil. Uh, in the church I was in, it was something that you could not do. It was something you should not do. Um, it was... Uh, driven by Satan and his angels. Now, there are those who believe that and have their arguments for that, and I understand that. Don't cross the streams, said Randall Flagg. That's right. Um, oh, uh, you see, Peyton came from your stream. That's crossing the streams. Got it, got it, got it. Well, you're welcome here. Uh, Jason, you're welcome here, too, as always. Good to see you. Uh, you learned in kindergarten? Oh, wait, wrong book. Yeah, everything I know about spirit, spirit communication they taught us in kindergarten. Uh, no, but uh, um, it was always a thing that was taboo. You're not supposed to do that. And uh, I was somebody who grew up very interested in all this stuff, but not from a vocational point of view or, 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 or a, uh, a career or a, uh, uh, a topic of study or scholarship or academics. It was all the spooky stuff. We were drawn to it because we were curious about it. But it also scared the crap out of us. And so uh, while I was always drawn to it, I was always afraid of it. And it wasn't until uh, I was in my, my mid to late 20s that I really started getting into it more. My aunt, my late aunt, um, who passed away, in 1995, and has, by the way, communicated with me uh, since she's passed. But uh, uh, she was always into the ghosts and the witchcraft stuff and all that. She was a witch without being affiliated in any sort of way with a coven or Wiccan or paganism or anything like that. She just referred to herself as a witch. Uh, no communing with the departed, says Michelle Canham Free. Yeah, those were the rules, weren't they? And so um, Steph says she's been doing a lot of research on debunking and research and all this equipment we use investigating. And I do have some concerns on what I'm learning. Yeah, me too. Uh, I have some concerns. I also uh, have things that have been completely debunked by others that have worked magnificently for me and uh, without question. Uh, the uh, little clip I have of Uncle Dave. Uh, that clip was recorded on a phone spirit box ITC device, but according to some, that's a piece of junk. But it uh, worked for me, and it gave me Dave's voice. So I think things can do whatever they want to do, and they can speak whatever way they want to. It's like here, if you look at this again, you look at our uh, uh, in the subtitle of tonight's show, the spirit world that interacts with us in so many ways. We just need to notice them. And uh, that is the truth on that. And uh, my concerns, Kalina, the concerns I have heard or the concerns I have are that I see good people 
good scientific uh, researchers that will debunk the things. But I also see with a lot of people that debunk them, they are people that aren't really people that want to believe anything about the spirit world anyway. Now, that's a generalization, but that's what I've seen. Most of the people who debunk these devices are not people who believe you can communicate with spirits or that ghosts even exist. Uh, so um, I don't trust things with word banks. I don't like that either, Steph. I don't like a device that will uh, throw out pre-programmed words and phrases. Help me or uh, get out or anything. It's already programmed in. Um, I want to hear a pure voice. It's, uh, that's why we used to use not uh, this particular device. I've got this here, uh, this spirit box that we take on uh, investigations. But uh, we used to use the old Radio Shack uh, transistor. I don't know, was it a transistor radio or a digital radio? But you could manipulate. You could open it up and rewire it a little bit, and you had yourself a spirit box. And uh, there was no pre-programmed anything in that. Uh, this one, too, picks up radio stations. And sometimes it will create sentences out of things on radio stations. Sometimes you get, like when I communicated with my aunt, it wasn't on this. It was on the old shack hack, we used to call them, the radio shack radios that you'd hack into. Um, that one, her voice was floating over. The pa -pa 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 it's, it's scanning the frequency, going around in a circle, just scanning it over and over again. But her voice appeared over several different frequencies, which was uh, very interesting. Randall Flagg says, watch out for the TV personalities. Yeah, some of them, I think so. I think you're right. Some of them are good. Uh, uh, just finished Ghostbusters Afterlife uh, last eve. Oh, the, the one from that came out last year? We saw that as a family at the theater. I thought that was pretty good. And it was a nice homage to uh, some of their people. And uh, what's it? what was his name? Reitman that uh, passed away? Can't remember his name. Uh, he was one of the original. And they used AI to reconstruct him. And old footage, I was told. So it's very interesting. Well, um, regarding tonight, I wanted to look at, I was looking at, Spirit communication through devices, um, and I've got I've got some very interesting stuff up about devices, um, and some of the I saw a top ten list of the devices that you could use, and uh, I'm kind of pushing that one to the back. If we have time for that, we'll get to that. Um, but there's some other things that I saw here that I thought was very good, and uh, um, this is. Uh, spiritual mediumship and how they communicate with spirits and ghosts. And uh, I thought this was pretty good. Um, you know, I have been in situations where I'm talking to somebody, a medium, and they'll stop me. Um, it was like uh, uh, Michael and Marty Perry, if you're familiar with them. I've talked about them on the show before, P-A-R-I. And uh, um, they are mediums. You've seen them on, um, uh, oh, what's the show? You've seen them on, uh, uh, well, not Ghost Adventures, obviously. You've seen them on a couple of the other shows that are out there. And uh, he's a British man. She's American. They're, they've been married for quite a number of years. And uh, um, he does the mediumship and she draws pictures while uh while they're doing that and she many times i think spirit art was her website you could check that out i might be wrong about that but uh um yeah they are uh, really good and i was sitting in their hotel room at an event and uh um he would say while we were talking he'd say oh i have somebody here that wants to talk to you and he described my aunt uh, who had, who I j mentioned just a little bit ago. He also described my grandfather. She went to get him. Oh, she's gone to get somebody to, that wants to talk to you. Uh, oh, they're back. It was that quick. And uh, um, and so uh, 
uh, they said something. There was somebody else that they brought forward uh, that was my mentor from my youth. And all of these people, and it was very authentic uh, because there are things they would not have known about any of these people. But as I'm talking about uh, this particular thing, sometimes you can be in conversations and you'll get messages from people who've, who've gone on already. And uh, they'll say things to you. Uh, my old mentor said uh, he was proud of where I had gone. And I thought, I said to Michael at the time, I said, that seems odd because he was very much in the Baptist church. This would have been something that he would have shunned, this type of thing, my doing tarot readings and all of that. And uh, that's where Michael said, well, he says things are very different over here than I thought they were going to be. And I thought that was very interesting. So um, things being different than what he thought. And what he thought was, of course, a very religious setting for what the afterlife would be like. So uh, what does that mean? What does that do uh, to that kind of uh, faith story that we both were living? But um, I can tell you what, these things, were they shake you up a little bit when you get that kind of thing. Um, and I was already somewhat familiar with the spirit world at that point, though, but not by any means an expert in it or a medium or a psychic or anything like that. And so, um, while not everybody believes in the existence of a spirit world, for those who do, there's few things to understand before connecting with the afterlife. Like what spirits are. Uh, that seems very fundamental or basic, but if someone was to come up to you and ask you, so you believe in this ghost and spirit stuff, what is a spirit? Can you answer them? Is a spirit the soul of somebody who passed on, or is that the ghost? And the spirit is some, something totally different. Um, and more importantly, what are they not? A spirit. So there's a little bit of a guide I'm going to go through here. And there's six different things we're going to cover. What are spirits? Uh, why you may want to connect to spirits. Uh, understanding spirit guides. How to communicate with your spirit guides. Tips for contacting spirits from mediums. And there's a little bit of an F and Q that if we get to that, we'll go through that. But connecting with spirits. So first things first, let's go to what are spirits? If we talk about the spirit box, communicating with spirits, uh, spirit uh, uh, communication altogether, is this the kind of stuff, talking with these kinds of entities, that was the stuff that was forbidden in the Old Testament and in Scripture, if you're a, a Judeo-Christian or even Muslim? To some extent, I don't know all the Muslim rules on this one, but uh, um, I think most of the Abrahamic religions have prohibitions against conjuring spirits. Is standing with a box like this in the dark in a ha house that's supposed to be haunted and saying, if anybody is here, could you talk through this little device? Is that conjuring? Is that what that is? Do we try to water it down and say that's not conjuring? And the only reason we'd water it down is if we have a belief system, perhaps, that makes us feel a little bit of guilt or a twinge of guilt at doing that sort of thing. Um, rabbit dogs, rabbit dogs is a, a spirit is what inhabits you after you drink too much rum. Ah, the rum. What did you do with all the rum? Uh, yeah, yeah, spirits. Uh, and, of course, that's where that term came from. And so, uh, so what are they? So before diving into all the ins and outs of spirit communication methods, it's really important to fully understand spirits. Because when you're connecting with the afterlife, you should always know what could be waiting there on the other side for you. If you're going to reach out, what are you going to get? What are you going to pull back in? What's going to follow you back in? What's going to be drawn to your voice invoking them? 
Is it necessarily going to be the voice of the person you might want to be contacting? Or is it going to be something else? I, I still have to ask all those. Uh, you know what? I've got this chill going up my back through this whole thing. Up my back and up the back of my arms. Right now through this whole thing. I'm not spooked by any of it or anything like that. But all of a sudden, I've got these chills going up. Those are things you're supposed to pay attention to and you're supposed to listen to. Uh, but uh, so what am I feeling when I get that? What do you think when you get that? I have an opinion on that. Um, so um, you have to know what you're taught, what you're doing, what you're getting, who you're getting, what might be coming through. Because sometimes, and I tell you, I'll do this even now. I get a voice like uh, Uncle Dave's when I got his voice. Um, was that truly Uncle Dave? Sure sounded like him. It was his voice that came through. And he said something that could be canned, you know, within a programmed into the, uh, the phone app that I was using. But I've seen other very good organizations use that phone app, the same one, uh, the Necrophonic. You can go look it up. It costs about 10 bucks to get it on your phone. You can try it out. But uh, why are these, everybody's, traditionally has been afraid of Ouija boards, things like that. Well, really, a spirit box is not much different than that. You're just not spelling out letters with your hands on a planchette. Uh, but you are getting spirit communication. So, law of respect, Dave. Don't get Scotty's bones cold. There you go. Yeah. And, and you've all heard it several times. And uh, maybe it's a good time just because we're talking about it. It's only 17 seconds long. I'll play it again for you right now so your memory's refreshed. Get your ears ready, and you got to listen closely to his answers. Here we go. 17 seconds. Dave, I love you, brother. I miss you, too. I miss you, too, I heard. Yep. Did you guys hear that? I heard that. I miss you, Dave. Okay, so we played that the other night as well. Did you catch that? Um, right after I said, I love you, Dave, uh, I got, I miss you, too. And between the words you and two, there was a, uh, like, came through some weird sound that came through. And so that's what you heard there. And then he said it again um, afterwards, uh, after I came back to him and I uh, and. And uh, after Rainey said, uh, did you hear what he said? And so what are you really hearing is the big question. Who's really talking to you? Is it that person that you are wanting to communicate with? Or is it something else or somebody else? Uh, there's the big question. And there's the tricky side of it. So when I say you've got to know what you're talking to, uh, when you're when you're doing this there are such things as ghosts and these types of spirits are usually the first things that people bump into when they start doing this communication because they're stuck here on the earth plane this is what uh, some of these uh, psychics will say uh this happens to be uh, somebody named uh, um gabriel uh that said that i don't i didn't catch the last name here but uh uh, bumping into into or bumping into a ghostly spirit is a feeling that that a feeling is essentially that energy you feel when you visit an historic place or when you're in a place with undeniably supernatural vibes, and that sounds like such pop cultural nonsense talk. Supernatural vibes. Oh, I feel the supernatural vibe. Um, it's just, it's just pop cultural talk. It's ghost speak, so to speak. Um, as we're describing this stuff, you get that vibe that something is different. The historical locations are big on this. The chills on the, on my back and up the backs of my arms. That's very indicative of, see, now it's happening again right now. As I say that, you know what that is? And now it's gone all the way over. It goes into my chest down it's in the my thighs i'm getting a very big chill that's going through my entire body right this moment 
And so what is that? Is that a sign that somebody is here, that somebody's making their presence known to me? Is it Uncle Dave, uh, whose silhouette is over there because there's a light behind his big coat that's hanging in the doorway to the to the uh, store, the, my my storage room over there. So uh, uh, so it's interesting. Um, you you should never ever be afraid of a ghost. Uh, spirits are hanging out among us here on Earth all the time. Their negative reputation. You know, the narrative that's constantly being reinforced in all the scary movies and all that is reflective of a super rare occurrence. Spirits don't really hurt you and they don't harm you. Uh, you can get weird vibes and weird feelings from them, but they're pretty harmless. So that's good anyway uh, about spirits. They don't go out of their way to harm you. They don't have it. Sometimes they just want to get your attention because they want you to talk to them or they want to talk to you. The thing with certain ghosts and spirits is that they don't cross to the other side after they die. So they're operating in this earth element, which is why you can communicate with them. And our spirit lives on when we die, but we do see instances where people have something that's really tethering them down to the earth. And so they get stuck here and they can't move on. And so, uh, Something that's tethering them. Our spirits live on when we die. Some of those key words. Um, this is, I think, what is frightening about ghosts is not so much the ghost itself. It's the experience. It's that first time where you have something. All of a sudden, you turn around, there's a face looking at you. Or there's somebody standing at the foot of your bed or you see them walking through your house. Those things are unnerving. That's probably the scariest part of a ghost. And I would think once you get over that hump, they're probably fairly easy to talk to. Uh, Elderberry says, probably getting a big old spectral hug, Scotty, maybe. Yeah, because Elderberry, I felt that all up and down my back and arms and into the tops of my legs. Um. He wants me to have a shot of some whiskey. Yeah, probably. Instead, I'll take a shot of water. Mm. So I'm talking my throat into being a little dry. Uh, but uh, why might you want to connect with a spirit in the first place is the next thing. Now that we've, in a light way, you know, this is kind of ghost light. Um we talked about spirits and what they are. Um, you're going to get ghostly spirits, and then you're going to get spirits that have nothing to do with ha ever having been in corporeal form. Uh, earth spirits, energy spirits, uh, air, water, elemental spirits. Those are the ones that I think can do a little more harm. You can be uh, probably healthy, afraid, healthy to be afraid of them. Uh, to a certain extent, because you're not dealing with somebody that's lived here before, that's been a part of this world before, at least in physical form. So why might you want to connect with a spirit? And beside the fact that you may just find it pretty cool and exciting and adventuresome, adventurous, probably a better way to say that, adventuresome I don't think is, a, is adventuresome a word, adventurous. Uh, it's, it's adventurous to, to connect with past ones who've gone on, loved ones who've gone on. And, uh, like I can say, Hey, Bill, I can say, Hey, Andy, Hey, grandpa, Hey, Dave. And we can say hi to these people and they probably hear us. You can also learn from certain spirits. If you listen to their messages, there's so much more to the spirit world than just ghosts. And if you move through that fear, it can be really beautiful uh, because there's some fear connected with some of that. If you can elevate and quiet your mind, you start to connect with the higher vibrational spirit and that world, and you can get in touch with loved ones. And that's where you get this amazing connection and this beautiful energy that can assist you in your life and help you in your healing sometimes.
the healing over their loss. Uh, Chuck Thurston says, saw the spirit of my grandmother many times after her death. She even showed my, me where she hid some money in several places in her house. That's interesting. How did she show you that? Uh, Chuck, I'd be interested in hearing that. Did she tap it out, uh, follow the tapping sound? Uh, did she tell you in your mind? How is it that you found these things? That's very interesting. Um, Claudette says, uh, uh, to see Peyton, yes, oh, yes, only use the light. I never fear either. Um, and Peyton says, I'm not usually scared when I talk to spirits. I, I can talk with them. I rarely get them talking back other than through devices. Um, I have had them speak to me. My aunt spoke to me. I've been spoken to. I've never quite heard the audible voice somewhere. Uh, it's always through a device or through a medium mediumship of some kind that uh, I've communicated with spirits. Probably been communicated with by spirits um, when uh, without quite knowing it. It might be some things that. Uh, you know, that go on in uh, in our minds. And we get uh, information that way that's being communicated with us. Um, but most of, most of our loved ones can be carrying specific messages for us. And there's not just one way to connect with them. Everyone I've ever read or talked to uh, is already connected to the spirit world without me. So I always tell people, your loved ones are with you, not me. Um, I remember distinctly, and it comes to mind, I, I may have shared the story once before, but I was doing readings at a uh, Ghost Hunters event at the Stanley Hotel. Uh, it might have been a darkness radio event, uh, but I think it was a Ghost Hunters event. And... Um, uh, I had a cup, uh, uh, two sisters that came in for readings and I had them lined up all day long, uh, 15 minute slots, uh, for just, uh, two and three card readings. And, uh, the one sister sat in for, they sat in with each other's reading. I said, that's fine. And the first one, we kept getting a message of, that she had to move on. She had to let go of something. And, and we, I wasn't sure what it was at that point yet. Then, and the other sister was very emotional about it. And I was already just starting to ascertain somebody's obviously passed on here and they're giving them a message they wanted to hear. And then I read for the second sister and it came up that uh, the cars just pointed to uh, your, your husband passed away. And I wasn't getting that psychically. I saw it through the cards because I had a card for a strong man in her life. There was influential relationship, lots of cups, lots of death, uh, uh, the passing on the change of things and so on. And it just in two or three cards, I saw very clearly this person that was talking to us before. He said, now I'm getting those chills all up and down my shoulders and the back of my arms. I'm going to tell you when it happens that this person was speaking to them and telling them and i kept throwing new cards out to clarify some messages and they were getting a message of basically i've passed on uh, i'm gone you are hurting and the hurt you're feeling i want you to stop you're gonna hurt but i want you to stop dwelling on that i want you to move along i want you to move because i'm okay and you need to be okay. Things are going to be okay, was the message I was getting. And by the time I was done, they were both crying, and I sent them on their way, and I thank God I had a break right after that. I went outside, and I lit up a cigarette. I was choked up uh, from the message. I let myself get a little too close to that one, and it really drew me in, and it really uh, got me involved with that emotionally. But this is how they speak to us. They have something they might want to say to us. Um. So your loved ones are always with you. They're not with me when I do a reading. They're with you. And you can think of uh, accessing them 
as similar to turning on and tuning into an old radio show. It's about raising your vibration up as the spirits slow theirs down. And you meet in the middle so you can hear them. Now, let me clarify something, too. I am not a medium. I have never claimed to be a medium. I don't even claim to be a psychic. I get messages through these cards. And uh, um, I've always called it my positive crutch. I don't want to go with what I'm getting in my head. I want to go with what I'm seeing in the cards. And many times I'm given messages in my head. So if that's mediumship, I've got that edge to it, little tiny bit. So uh, let's see. Scotty, having a mild chill and pressure on our left shoulder blade? Yeah, I am. Uh, both sides, actually, Chuck. <laughs> so uh, as I'm talking through this whole thing. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, off and on, I'm getting that. And I'm not like, ooh, I wonder what's around me. No, I'm not like that. I'm just talking, and all of a sudden, I'll get that chill. And uh, so it's it's been very interesting this evening as I'm talking about these things. Now, what about spirit guides? I've been told by different people uh, that were good mediumship type of people that I have spirit guides. And supposedly we all do. And that's something I don't talk about much because I don't understand it much. Um, and I more talk about the mechanics of ghost hunting, some of the things we get. But... I don't talk a lot about the spirit guide issue and I know I've got them and I've had a couple of good people describe them for me. I've had uh, two or three different people that described a spirit guide to me, gave his physical appearance. They said he's like a huge red headed, red bearded, uh, like uh, think of a Norseman or a Viking or a Scotsman ancient. And that's the feeling they gave me. And I had a friend that even along with him gave a, what he thought was an Indian name, Native American language. That was, wow, 15 years ago, probably, that he told me that. And so if you're hoping to communicate with spirits, you might want to start with trying to contact your spirit guide. Ask for them. Do I have a spirit guide? And some people might call them guardian angels. Uh, you have to think of your earthly life as a journey and a classroom. And we come to earth to learn. That's basically why we're here. And uh, spirit guides can be highly evolved light beings. And this is why I don't talk about this stuff too much. It starts to smack of a little too new age gobbledygooky to me and i don't really understand all that and i like you know the the light beings who were all light beings where they this and that and babbly 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 and uh, so i avoid that stuff i like to deal with the here and the now a little bit a little bit rather than the quote unquote theology of spirit guides and 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 spiritism but uh um uh, and these spirit guides, they're, they're evolved light beings. They're essentially helpers, spirit helpers, that are guiding us through our journeys. And they're done incarnating, meaning they're done living their lives. And they've lived so many lives and then have not chosen to incarnate anymore, so they take on this special role in spirit. Because they've lived so many lives these spirit guides, and they understand the human experience. Now, this is the part that I wrestle with because I still, believe it or not, I wrestle with the whole reincarnation thing because it flies in the face of what I was taught theologically. Not that I'm a, an avid practi practitioner of that anymore, but they do still conflict in my head. And so uh, um, connecting with your spirit guide is like hiring a Sherpa for your journey to the top of Mount Everest. And like a Sherpa on a trail, the spirit guide has been here before and is experienced, meaning they're equipped to help and support us. That's just like uh, there are certain things I know in life that I can help my kids and other people because I've been there. I know how this stuff works. 
Same with the spirit world and our spirit guides. So just to clarify, spirit guides aren't angels. They're not loved ones who've passed on. Um, while spirit guides have so much experience to offer through all the different lives they've lived, angels have always been angels and always are angels and always will be angels. Sometimes people think, oh, my grandma crossed over. Is she my spirit guide now? Well, really, the answer to that is no. You can believe that, but I don't think that is so. Now, take out the I don't think. I, that's not so. That's not who they are. Uh, these past loved ones are incredible parts of our support team and spirit, but angels are angels and guides are guides. They're not the ghosts of people who've gone on who loved us. Um, we all have at least one, sometimes two or three spirit guides with us. And from before we came to earth and until after and beyond, these are our main guides. And each spirit guide in your support team may have a different purpose. You can call upon one to protect you and another to help you achieve a goal. And this is interesting because uh, Teresa St. Francis, I've mentioned her book before, the one that I edited for her, designed her cover, and I so I had to read that book 10 times. She was the one who uh, would have the spirits of teens and young adults who had committed suicide would come to her. And they came through her spirit guides, and then uh, they would constantly, I'm getting these chills again, all up my arms. Um, they would come to her and uh, wanted to tell her their stories. And she wrote a book about them called uh, What Happens the Day After. You can look up Teresa St. Francis. And uh, I don't remember what her website is. This was six, seven years ago, I think, when this book was published. And uh, so you can look that up, and it's really moving. And she talks about all these different spirit guides and angels and things like that. So how do you communicate with them, your spirit guides? One of the most common mistakes sees people that, 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 that you can see people making when learning how to communicate with spirit guides is looking to the outside world. Instead, spirit guides connect with your intuition and through your mind, through your brain, through your inner self. And when you go within your own spirit and your own self and your own heart, you can cool down. You can listen to that connection with your spirit guides through intuitive voice. So how do you do that exactly? Well, you start by finding the tools that help you quiet your mind. Who just said something about meditation? Steph did. I have done meditation, she said, in hypnosis with my intuitive group, and we would learn and meet up with our spirit guides. It took a while, but it's amazing, she said. And I'm not skipping your comments over there, folks. I'm just getting through my material, and maybe we'll hit some of these in uh, the captain's cabin. So uh, that's where you find your spirit guides. Um, you stop focusing on silence and find what actually helps you claim or calm your mind so that you can hear the rhythm, the magic, the connection to your soul. Spirituality isn't something that should be on your to-do list. It should be something that feels wonderful, amazing. Um, you're experimenting and exploring with it. So you find something that works for you. So stop focusing on the silence. I got to sneeze. <coughs> Where is my mute button when I need it? It's over here. So for some people, that's just journey, journaling. That's how you get in touch. For others, it's breath work. It's meditation. It's stretching, which I need to do. I am so stiff these days. It's unbelievable. Or walking in nature. Um. Some people will even recommend dancing around and getting lost in your favorite music if that feels good to you. I remember doing that once. I had an office way back in the early 80s after my divorce. And it was, uh, I was still a 28-year-old kid and uh, 26 years old, maybe. 
and I was uh, in a dance studio where I, I officed. It was a friend of a friend. And uh, sometimes I would put the music on loud and I'd go in the dance studio and I would just, I would just move. I would move. I wouldn't dance. I'm not a dancer. I would just move to the music and that would speak to me. Don't, don't, uh, no matter what you do to quiet your mind, don't stress or get caught up in the process. That's only going to make your spiritual communication more difficult. And the more chaotic you are and stressed and anxious and overwhelmed, the harder it is to listen to your own intuitive voice. And that doesn't mean you have to be a pro at meditating to connect to your spirit guides either. But when you start dropping into your intuitive voice, you're going to be rewarded with little messages from your spirit guides. Think rainbows on the walls and angel numbers or recurring patterns of repeating or sequential numbers like 12, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 7, 7, things like that. Mine has been 444. And uh, she calls these winks from the spirit world to let you know you're on the right path. Whenever I see 444, um, I'm reminded of that time when Rainy and I were sleeping. It was the middle of the night. We were still dating at this point, And the blankets got pulled off of us. Whoosh! In the middle of the night, that big heavy blanket. You've heard me tell that story a few times. Well, when I looked up at the clock, it was 4.44 in the morning. I was later told, well, that's the number of angels. Well, what's significant? Was it an angel that pulled my covers off? Was it whatever? So, But whenever I see the 4.44, I've got myself a little prepped for, is there a message coming? Do I need to pay attention? Hey, Unleash Jeremy Hansen. So there's a new band called the Red Clay Stay Strays. I think I have a spiritual connection with a lot of their songs. Now I want to go look them up, Jeremy. The uh, Red Clay Strays. I'm going to have to take a listen to them. So if you feel disconnected from your spirit guides, you're not alone. The intense pull to earthly matters may be to blame for that. Think about it. We're all getting constant pings from our phones. We have access to 24-7 news, and we're pretty much available to anyone at any time, and I've noticed that. doesn't matter where I am. I get my phone will ring or a ping or whatever, and uh, we're always available. We're inundated with technology and chaos and consumerism and sales. We're like a computer that's bugging out. Uh, while none of these things are necessarily bad things, never taking the time to unplug can make it really hard to connect with yourself, let alone spirits. But as you're trying to quiet your mind and connect with the beyond, just know that your spirit guides are going to be right there waiting for you. And it just might be a little harder to hear them if you don't ever tune in or if it's been a while. And you know when you haven't talked to a friend in a really long time, you start to disconnect. You have to build the relationship and the connection. But if you don't feel it right away, it doesn't mean they're not there. It just takes time to focus and time to get back into the, into the mode. So there are some tips I have for you now that we've got three minutes left of the show. Might have to do some of these in the after show. But uh, the medium tips and techniques for contacting spirits. These are from mediums. I'll just read you the points. Number one is ensure that you are in the right mindset before attempting any spiritual communication. It's important to set clear intention. Focus on the connection you want to make. Number two, avoid using tools. Don't use these to connect with your spirit guides. That's something for totally different times. Uh, your spirit communication of choice Probably shouldn't be anything you've seen in a movie or on a TV show. Number three, create an altar of your own. While you don't need a fancy setup to connect with spirits, a kitchen table works just fine. Uh, you may benefit from creating an altar. A dedicated space is all that is. It's not, oh, I'm worshiping something. It's just a dedicated space, your altar, to connect with the spirits. Number four. Never call in specific spirits. 
Now, when you're new to connecting with the afterlife, you don't want to summon particular spirits. Uh, don't call in the spirits. You got to tune into the energy that's around yourself. I do it trying to connect with the energy around the people I'm reading. Focus your energy on working with your spirit guides and see what comes from that. Five, don't feed into fear. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God, as the song says. If you feel as if you're not in the right mindset or you're fearful of connect, contacting your spirits, don't use medium techniques. Don't cater to fear. If you're freaking out, thinking about scary stuff, that's the vibe you're going to end up starting with. That's no good. Take a deep breath. Ask, what you're, ask, ask that you're protected with positive energy, white light energy. Set your intentions. Like when I asked that spirit from Egypt to lend protection over me. It was amazing. Six, follow your gut. It's important to listen to your intuition when connecting with the beyond. Listen to your number seven, your dreams. Oh, if they stick with you, listen to them. Pay attention to what you see while you've been sleeping. They're usually trying to get a hold of you. Eight, try a writing practice. Journaling we've talked about, writing meditations. It's kind of an automatic writing, not... Uh, but just something where you're you're thinking about where you want to be with it. Ask a question. Take a deep breath. Relax your hand. Let it loose and write up what they're saying. They'll start talking really fast. Um, nine, give it time. If you're having trouble con contacting spirits, despite your best intentions, it's a process. It's a practice like anything else. It can be very frustrating at first because you want to connect immediately, but it doesn't work like that. And so I've got a bunch of things that I wrote down that are frequently asked questions. How do spirits contact you? How many spirit guides does a person have? Things like that. We don't have time for that now. We might get into that in a, in a, in a little bit uh, in the captain's cabin. But for now, we've got to get out of here for the radio audience. If you're listening over on, on uh, odysseyradio.com, uh, it's time for us to go. So I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the show. Stick around for the captain's cabin right after this. Live long and prosper. Join us every weeknight at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern. The Intrepid Radio Program. A Scotty Roberts Productions broadcast. Hey folks, this is Scotty Roberts and this is the Intrepid Radio Broadcast. I've been broadcasting for about 20 years now, covering such topics as science, politics, the paranormal, weird science, weird world history, archaeology, and the paranormal. Everything from ghosts to cryptids to creepy things that go bump in the night. So every week I bring you three new episodes. Come and join my channel and also be a patron to this site. So see the details below, and we'll see you here.
Dave, I love you, brother. I miss you too. I miss you too, I heard. Yep. Did you guys hear that? I heard that. I miss you, Dave. Well, good night, Barbie D. I see that you left the chat room. Welcome to the Captain's Cabin, everybody. Uh, the Captain's Cabin, if you're not familiar with it, if you're new to this show, uh, every night, right after we leave the radio airwaves, we come over here, we stay over on the YouTube channel, and we uh, broadcast the after show. And you can call into this show if you want to talk about any of the things that we've talked about tonight. Uh, or if you have a weird off-topic thing, we can maybe do something about that. But here, I've pasted the link into the chat room over on the YouTube channel. Um, if you are on Facebook or Twitter, you might not see that, even though you can leave messages in those places. So come on over to the YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Scotty Roberts. And uh, you'll see this show there. And uh, it's got this graphic right here uh, is the one you'll click on when you get to my channel uh, if you're not there now. So uh, talking to spirits. And uh, again, I will say I am not one that is great at giving advice on the spirit world and communicating with them. Um, I don't consider myself an expert. I don't know many people that really could be experts because there's a lot of subjective data that we have to deal with. I think that there are people who are perhaps more in tune than I am, and uh, maybe they can feel as if they are a lot less subjective than I have to be because they deal with it every day. I don't. And perhaps the more you open yourself up to this, the more that you're able to do it. Perhaps this is why religious teachers that uh, wrote the Old and New Testaments would talk about on occasion, you know, staying away from giving yourself over to the spirit world, probably because it draws your attention away from or your actions or the things you understand about the universe away from the theology. So uh, that's where I'm still a little mixed on some of the stuff. What should I believe? What shouldn't I believe? I think I'm very strong about the things I believe, but there are things that I'm strong about that I still question. And I think it's okay to question. What was it that uh, Rapid Dog asked just a little bit? If you're still here, uh, let's see, where are you? Uh, you're back here a little bit. Uh, there's my response to you. You said, what's the benefit of contacting a spirit? I think the benefit, again, that is a, there's a very subjective answer to that. Oh, hey, Leslie Holker. Good to see you. Uh, let me get to your answer here, but uh, Leslie says, we're spiritual beings, and I believe after death, spirits of our loved ones stay with us in another realm on this earth, and if you pay attention and listen, they're there. Exactly. Uh, that was the uh, uh, kind of the under uh, underscore the uh, uh, subtitle to tonight's show, Leslie, uh, talking to spirits underneath. The spirit world interacts with us in so many ways. You, or I misspelled it there, we just need to notice them. That's right. It's there all the time. It's like the chills I got tonight. And so, uh, Rapid Dog, I think that connecting with the spirit world, I don't think there's... You asked what the benefits are. Uh, I think the benefits are for you individually as you do it. I don't think there's a need for anybody to have to go out and do that. 
you could probably live your whole life and never connect with your spirit guides or with the spirits or whatever. And you'd be just fine. I think there's a lot of people that have gone through life like that. But I also think there's probably a lot of people that we think go through life like that, that have asked the questions and probably had their own little encounters with things. So I think it's all about maybe wanting to learn more about yourself, wanting to learn what they have to show you. Um, and will that change who we are? Will it change course of action? Maybe it will. Maybe it will. Maybe it might not seem great, but it might, it might be, do I, uh, do this or do I do that? And you consult your spirit guides. You might get a feeling for what you should or should not do. So, uh, Jeremy Henson said, that's awesome, Leslie. Uh, did you take her? Oh, oh, I missed uh, what Leslie said. Uh, Leslie uh, went on. Oh, here we are. We're, we're spiritual beings, she said. And uh, then you said, yeah, I have to go back and listen. Oh, oh, we have Amelia tonight. Hi, Amelia, if she's still there with you. Uh, in the land of the awake, <laughs> wake, wake, woke up people. <coughs> None of that you can say without being sounding one way or the other these days anymore. If she's still awake, if she's not in bed yet, I meant. So, uh, people who want to become more open, says Chuck Thurston. I have to bring this up a little bit bigger because of my eyes tonight. People who want to become more open to spirits, it's fine if you can, but it's also like fighting a flame in the dark. It can draw things you may not want to go cautiously. Exactly. That was one of the first points I made, Chuck, with the show tonight was uh, if you seek out the spirits, be careful what you're seeking and know what you're doing and know what the possibility is of what's out there for the possibility of bringing back in something or connecting with something you don't really want to. Oh, Amelia's sleeping. Grandma read her a few. Um, where did that go? It bounced up. Oh, a few stories. Well, that's good. That's always good. And. Uh, Got to take a drink. It's just Diet 7 Up. It's not even Diet 7 Up. It's Zero Sugar 7 Up. There you go. Notice they stopped doing that. Diet was the big thing for two decades. Now they've really gotten away from that. It's not diet soda. There's a stigma to that. I'm not dieting. Uh, it's sugar-free now. So... That's the big thing. And for me, a diabetic, it's good to be sugar-free. That's some of that. So I'm awake and woke, says Chuck. I'm just awake. I'm not woke. I think woke is a weird political thing. So um I don't I don't believe in it. I but I get what you were I get your humor, Chuck. So uh uh Scotty, we're rereading Tam O'Hare for about the sixth time. Outstanding. That's nice to hear, Leslie. I appreciate that. And uh, one of these days I should cut an audio book for Tam um, only because that uh, Tam and probably the story books, I could, I could do my other books as well, but uh, um, Kalina says spiritual apocalypse. I'm not sure what you're referring to there. Oh, uh, Jeremy Hansen said, supposedly, this eclipse is a spiritual apocalypse. I'd like to hear more about what you have to say about that, Jeremy. You can call in if you want, or you can just tell us in the chat room. I haven't heard that. Spiritual apocalypse uh, connected with uh, the eclipse of the sun. The eclipse of the moon. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a solar eclipse, yeah. So, uh, there you go. So, um, yeah, spiritual stuff. What do you believe about the spirit world? What do you believe that's out there? Um, we've talked on this show, and I mentioned it the other night too, just made reference to it. We've talked about connecting with elementals and with earth spirits and things like that. Is there danger in that? Because we don't really know what they're going to do, what they're going to be like. We hear all the stories of the fae and the fairy folk and things like that, I happen to believe they exist. Uh, so if we connect with them, they're spiritual beings that are there. No matter how much we've taken and turned them into fairy tales and storybooks, it doesn't mean they don't exist. Nothing worse than losing your child, said Leslie. You said, I do believe the spirits of those... I can't read because of my eyes tonight. 
I do believe the spirits of those we loved so strongly are always with us. There's times I feel my son hug me when I'm having a really bad day. Nothing worse than losing your child. I believe you, and I don't envy you that sorrow at all. I mean, that's a bad way to put it. It just simply means I hope I never have to experience that. And I'm sorry that you have, Leslie. Um, I can't imagine there's anything good. You can, we can all say, oh, there's such good things that can come out of things. I, I don't think there's anything good about it. The good comes from how you learn to cope. I've lost people, but I've never lost a child. I don't know how I'd handle that. I don't know. if I've got that ability. <laughs> so uh, the last three times this kind of eclipse has happened, it's brought huge earthquakes and chaos. Oh, that's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens this time. Um, when is that going to be? That's coming up very quickly here, isn't it? So let's see. How's the blood sugar? My vision gets crappy when the glucose is too high. Blood sugar is perfect. I just had my cataracts done, Chuck. Um, you may, you may not have heard that if you weren't here. Uh, I had, uh, the first one done, um, three weeks ago and this one done last week. And so my eyes are still a little, they're adjusting to it. Something, it's crystal clear. Colors are not much more magnificent than they were before. I don't think I ever had a problem with that. Some people say they see colors clearer, more crisper. Um, for me, I was having, when I'd blink, I'd get these coronas, speaking of eclipses, around the outside of my eyes. I'd blink and I'd see it. Same over on this side. And... Uh, my eyes were foggy every now and then, and I'd have to really blink and really work out the fogginess in my eyes. And uh, so now I've got the surgery done. My eyes are crisper. My vision is crisper. But they don't correct your vision. They don't, uh, I don't know if they can't, but they put a lens in. And I never knew that having cataracts I thought it was cleaning off your eyes, scraping off your eyes or something. I, I didn't even know what was involved until I had this done, that they actually replace your lens in your eye. So they put manufactured lenses into my eyes. And so it's uh, uh, it's interesting. My eyes are still adjusting. And uh, it wasn't painful at all, Claudette. I didn't feel a darn thing. Uh, they numb up your eyes just like they do when they're well, they put all the drops in it. It dilates your eye. Just huge. You know, ah. uh, I looked at Rainy and Rainy was like, that's creepy. And uh, so it it uh, it dilates your eyes and then they numb your eyes. And they take out the cataract and slide in the new. It's done. It's it's like a 15-minute surgery. Um, it's so outpatient-y. You don't even have to change clothes. You don't have to put on a gown. They just put things over your shoes and uh they roll you in it's an operating room and uh, they put the the light gas up you're not supposed to it's not supposed to put you to sleep but it's put me to sleep both times and uh i just i wake up and i'm already done okay we're done oh hi <laughs> and uh, all it is and they've got drops prescribed drops i have to put three drops in my eye four times a day just keeps your eye from drying out. It helps it heal the incision in your eye. You can't even see it. My eyes didn't even turn red uh, after all that. So it was pretty. Good night, Leslie. I didn't see that you were going. Good night. Good to see you. Glad you made it here. Say hi to Emily for me tomorrow. Amelia for me tomorrow. So, um, uh, so that's it, uh, Claudette. Uh, uh, your left eye will have to be done soon. Yeah, I. <clears throat> they they weren't sure at first that they wanted to do them both at the same time, meaning two weeks apart. And I said, I don't want to have one eye done and the other one not done. Um, so, yeah, Claudette, no pain at all, nothing. You don't even have to anticipate. You don't even have to worry about it. They just roll you in, you sit in the chair. They put a series of drops in your eyes for about a half an hour, 20 minutes to a half an hour, ask you a bunch of questions, and they hook up the little nasal thing to you with the little tubes, you know, that comes around the little tube. 
that's all they do. They get you prepped. They put a um, stent in your wrist or your, your arm just to, to be prepared for stuff. And bing, bang, boom. They roll you in. They lay you back. Next thing you know, they're sitting you up and you're fine. And the only thing you have to contend with is your eyes really dilated. Never hurt at all. Don't even. And I'll tell you, now I have a high threshold for pain, but I'm going to tell you right off the bat. My eyes didn't itch. I didn't feel like I had to rub them. The only time I felt like rubbing my eyes, it was psychological. It was not physical. So uh, let me put your mind at ease altogether. It's a big deal getting it done, but it ain't no big shakes. And uh, it's nothing. So uh, it hurts more getting a tooth drilled. Well, that's pretty high up there. I don't even know what to compare it to. So no worries. Just relax. Take deep cleansing breath and you're going to be just fine. So. Hmm. Ah. Let's see, uh, castor oil is good for cataracts. And that stuff was found in Egyptian tombs. It's right. Castor oil. Uh, I never heard that about cataracts, though. And castor oil. Seems to me, I want to put as few things in my eyes as possible. I had somebody had me put honey in my eyes once. And that was supposed to be uh, uh, a cure-all for your eyes. And uh, honey's good for a lot of things. So put a couple of drops of honey in my eye once. Only one time I ever did it. And it was a long time ago. So. But my eyes make me feel awfully darn tired these days. And uh, I think it's because um, the only thing, uh, Claudette, since you're getting it done and you ask. The only thing I have felt is so there's times where I feel like it's up. If you could roll your finger behind your eyeball, there's like sometimes you just wish you could put a little pressure on that. So I don't want to rub my eyes. You're not supposed to because you don't want to hurt the incisions in there at all. This one's probably healed up enough, but I, I don't want, I still don't want to rub my eyes above and below the eye. Yep. And it's just like, oh, uh, you know. Um, and you wish you could just rub your eyes, rub the shit out of your eyes. <laughs> ah, that felt good, but you can't do that. At least not before it's fully healed, but they told me it'd be about a month. So it's been a week since the second eye. And uh, so it'll be about three weeks. I can go in and get glasses. So there you go. And my glasses right now, my old standards, like these are my computer glasses. I've mentioned this before. They're bifocals. Used to look at the computer with the upper part. Now I got to use the lower part for it to be crystal clear. But I can use these now for driving. And it's weird. So, But my eyes are almost clear. And these glasses, these bifocals, almost just a reading glass on the top anyway. And then the bifocal on the bottom for computer work. My glasses are all fairly worthless right now. <laughs> the other pair I don't even wear. So, um, so it's a little struggle sometimes. I have noticed, though, that reading things up close, I'm doing an awful lot of this this week. I'll look at stuff, and I want to read stuff like that, and I'll go. And I have to get it to where I can focus, which is way out here, which is odd for me. And But, of course, when I draw, I'm always up at like this, and I'm drawing tight. And right now, it's really out of focus. So I'd need to get a strong reader for that. So there it is. There you go. Computer screens have come a long way for the eye strain. Yes, I've got a retina screen on this with Apple. So it's the uh, supposed to be a lot better on your eyes. Uh Chuck Thurston did a lot of welding, glass blower, cataracts. I don't know what mine are from. It's either just old age or it's something else. So that's interesting, Jeremy, on that. Uh, 
Oh, they found an Egyptian pyramid in Tennessee, and they're reinvestigating it. That see now, I heard a little something about that. The pyramid in Tennessee. I'm just going to look it up real quick. The Memphis Pyramid. Is that what they're calling it? And I got some whack picture. It's not that big. Come on. The Great American Pyramid in the Pyramid Arena. Let's see if I'm looking at the right thing here. The Texas Pyramid. Oh, oh, that's a it's a building. Hold on. That's not ancient. Uh the Memphis Pyramid, bigger than Giza. See, this is a manufactured one, though, like the one in Las Vegas. The one I'm looking at in Memphis, Tennessee. Let's see if there's something else to this. Now, everything I'm seeing is uh, manufactured, man-made. This is an ancient Egyptian necropolis in the heart of the Bible Belt. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Is it just the uh, foundations of one, or is it buried, or is it... Uh, so I know there's a pyramid in uh, uh, Lake Michigan over here. Or no, not Lake Michigan. It's a smaller lake inland in... Uh, from the Great Lakes in Wisconsin. You heard of that one? So Memphis, an ancient Egyptian. Oh, it's talking about Memphis in, uh, of course, Egypt. Memphis, Egypt. That's where you uh, you have Saqqara is there. And uh, all of those. Memphis was an interesting town for me to visit You'd walk through and you would see ruins in the grass and uh, coming out of the, the dirt, uh, poking their heads up out of everything. And it was intriguing because that's so connected to the biblical story of Moses. I believe that all took place in Memphis, Egypt, Menifer back then. Right at the mouth of the Nile Delta as the Nile runs north, right there. And, uh, yeah, there's one in the lake in Wisconsin. Maybe that's what you meant. Uh, it's known as Cox Mound, C-O-X. It's interesting. Is that the one in, in, uh, in the lake in Wisconsin? Because I know you used to live up here, so maybe you were closer to that than, uh, let's see. Let's try it. Cox Mound. What is this? Cox Mound Gorge. It's a woodpecker. Uh, that's something different. Coxman Gorge Pendant. Uh, Wikilife Coxman Shell Gorge. It's talking about the Castilian Springs Mound site. Castilian Springs, wherever that is. Anyway, I'll look it up later. I just thought we could see it close and I'd grab a picture or something, but I'm not seeing it. So that's okay. We don't have to worry about it tonight. So Cox Mound sounds bad. It's some kind of venereal disease, like Moby Dick. So uh, uh, it was found in the 1930s, says Jeremy. Interesting. Interesting. Chuck says, now that I don't have clearance anymore, it's time to do some travel. I wasn't allowed off the continental U.S. before. Well, it's nice to be a free man, isn't it? Do some travel, brother. I love travel. Love to do more of it. So, I need a good masseuse first. I got one in my wife, but she can't do it right now. She's done something to her shoulder, and she needs surgery on her shoulder. So, her massage days might be done. She hasn't done a massage in almost a year, I think. So, so that's too bad. So, um, 
I have, since this is the after show, we got about a half an hour in the after show. I might call it uh, call it a night tonight. Um, got no callers uh, calling in our regulars: uh, Jason Patrick, Professor Bauer, uh, Sarah, uh, and others are gone. Anybody ever know what happened to Matthew Sainsbury? Uh, he used to call in all the time from uh, or listen to the show from Barbados. Haven't seen him for a while. I just wonder if he's doing okay. I haven't heard from him. So um, that's it. I'm And on top of that, my eyes have me feeling dog tired. So if we're not going to have callers, I'm okay with uh, calling the show a little bit early tonight. The after uh, the captain's cabin part anyway. Oh, go to Scotland, Chuck. There's some places they aren't trying to kill each other. Yeah. I love going to Scotland. My, my daughters, my older daughters, uh, want to take me to Scotland this May or June. We were going to do it last fall, and it got too late in the fall. So I said, let's push it off to May. So maybe maybe June. That'd be nice. So they just wanted to do a dad-daughter trip. And I said, yeah, we can do that. I, I would love to have Rainy come along, but I'm not going to push that issue. It's, uh, uh, since they're paying, and Rainy's going to go to Iceland with her sister. So uh, blah, blah, blah. There's all that. So we'll take different trips this time. So Claudette, you are welcome. Thank you for being here. And uh, Randall Flagg, good to see you. Everybody who is here, good to see you. Uh, we, uh, uh, I appreciate your being here. Thanks for being here during the show. And for a little bit of the Captain's Cabin, we ran uh, about... A little over a half an hour of the captain's cabin tonight. And I appreciate your being here. We'll do it again next week. And uh, um, what have I got? Oh, it's just Sunday. I was going to talk about Sunday. We'll be doing Sunday. Oh, by the way, think keep uh, um, Wendy in your minds. Uh, she's having some issues. And uh, she's been in and out of the hospital this last week. Uh, that's why we didn't do Robertson Robertson this week. And so keep her in your mind. She was uh, feeling a little under. Uh, but she is back home and she's doing as okay as can be. So that's all I know there. And uh, other than that, we'll see you on Sunday morning for uh, It's Sunday with Scotty and Rainy. Rainy doesn't make it in very often these days. But she'll make an appearance every now and then. And I think once we get a good computer up for her, we'll have uh, I'm going to replace her computer, and she can sit at her own computer rather than here alongside me, where it's very hard for her to feel like she's uh, really participating very well. So uh, we'll get her set up hopefully by this summer, and uh, she'll be able to do some of that uh, with the captain's cabin Sunday. Let's see, I'm, I'm trailing off. I'm not talking like a radio host. And so thank you for being here, and we'll be here with you on Sunday. Uh, with or without, Rainy will be here, and we expect that you'll have a good time. Come with your cup of coffee, blah, 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 and, uh, of course, plan on next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So all of you, thanks for being here again. Let's wrap it. You have a good night. Have a good weekend. We're going to get a blizzard up here on Sunday. So uh, uh, all of you that are here, thanks for being here. Uh, good night, Sean Stroik. Claudette, uh, Steph, you have a good night too. Chuck, you have a good night. Michelle, Canem Freedom, you have a good night. There's people down here sleeping already, so I have to be very careful with my noise at this hour. So uh, my wife is right on the other side of the wall. <clears throat> so um, everybody, if I missed you, good night. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you coming in. And we will see you soon. And uh, until then, live long and prosper. <laughs>